Hi, Property Magicians. Welcome to episode 30 of the Property Magicians podcast. If you've just joined, my name is Vangile Makwakwa. I help women of color heal ancestral money trauma so that they can fall in love with their bank accounts, increase income and live their best lives. And with me today is uh, a guest, Neo Nare, and she is one of the Money Magic students, but she also runs an incredible podcast uh, called Genie, the Genie podcast. <laughs> well, she'll explain more about it because I'm surely butchering the name because I always just she always talks about genies. So that's I just call everything Genie and she's going to explain what that is. Um, yeah, you're about, you're in for a treat learning about conscious parenting. That's her thing. That's what she does. So welcome. So oh, welcome, Neva. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much, Isabel, for inviting me. I'm really honored and humbled to be part of the, um, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us, what do you do before I butcher exactly what you do? <laughs> Who are you? What do you do? Your hobbies? All that. <laughs> um, thank you. I, I, I actually, I don't know if I'm going to say I always cringe when somebody says, tell us about yourself because, you know, it comes from the interviews. So you always feel like you're in the interviews. Pretend um, that you're literally just talking to me. And we're in the Money Magic student group. Forget all these other listeners. <laughs> yes. So um, my name is Neo Nari. Um, I'm from Maretani. It's a village in the Northwest. I call myself the genie coach um, simply because I coach genies. Genies are um, kids between age four years and 10 years. And oh. before I become a genie coach, I'm also a queen mother of two nature babies. Um, maybe to explain a bit on that, <laughs> I, yes, I yes. run more on the queen and mother archetype because mm. of the conscious parenting that I do. Um, and then the reason why I call myself queen mother of two nature babies is because my babies, two kids, I have two daughters, both their names are nature, Oreo, I mean, Kaho, which is also nature, and then Kalejo as well. So I call myself oh. queen mother of uh, two nature babies <laughs> oh that is yeah. so beautiful so before we even dig into um understanding your relationship with money and your understanding of trauma what got you to be a genie coach how did you come to do this work like what inspired you um what really inspired me was the money magic course and oh. the relationship, yes, and the, um, not the relationship, the, 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 we had a Zoom exploration meeting when oh, I yes, started. Oh, yes, we training. did. Yes, yes. 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 And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and wow. That, yes, um, that actually inspired me. I remember us that. talking <laughs> about that, but in my head, I thought that you were always this genie coach because now you run the podcast and maybe you can tell us a little about that, about the podcast. So the mummies listening in here can quickly just go hop on there after this, although I will also share it in the notes, we'll put it on the blog, we'll definitely share it around, but maybe do tell us good. about what it is. <laughs> yes, um, so the passion, um, was always there but yeah. it got inspired by our conversation so yes. you know it's that thing of having that intuition and that inner knowing but then you like actually gave me permission to open the nut and just take out <laughs> the seat inside <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an advanced psychiatric nurse practitioner so I've always loved mental health and you know yes. they always say mental health uh, mental health care users I like kids. Yes. So I never, yeah, I never actually understood or, or made connection between my love for psych versus my love for working with kids. But then oh. as you uh you, you made me question myself and I'm take all of that, I'd actually mm -hmm. realize no, I'm actually not really in love with psych as more as much as I'm uh, in love with the genies because psych oh. is reflecting what the genies are giving me you know oh. and and i think that the biggest aha moment to me was 
with the psych, we've made it to be abnormal, but with yeah. the genes, it's actually normal. They are doing the same thing, but now as soon as you become older, we say you are mentally ill. But when you do the very same mm -hmm. thing as a genie, then we're saying you are being a child. Although most of our parents, because we have wounds and other stuff, mm -hmm. do not want the kids to, you know, to embrace those part of their genie side. Mm -hmm. So like um, the like yeah. children are allowed to see like imaginary friends, to talk Unicorn, to imaginary yeah. beings, etc. <laughs> to see different things and to just have various yeah. conversations. But the minute you do it as an adult, you're strange, you're weird, etc. We put you in a box. <laughs> we give you a diagnosis, yes. Yeah, so like I live in fear of like one day being diagnosed for the work that I do with <laughs> spirit guides and ancestors, you know, like I always joke and say, I'm very lucky I was born in Africa because were I born in the West, probably myself and my sister would be like really in serious trouble and most of my family too because it would be something bizarre but you're right we tolerate not tolerate we even embrace this in kids and we play mm -hmm. along with it we're okay with it but come uh when adults start talking about some of these things and doing some of these things taking off shoes walking around mm -hmm. running around in forest like walking around barefooted on water just playing with you're strange something's wrong with you and, and i also have a similar inside joke to say you know there's this um i don't know if i should say believe or the say that when you are longer in the mental health um, um field then you become like them so i also was saying you know <laughs> me getting into the genie coach actually makes me more vulnerable to be diagnosed because they're gonna say she's been 10 years in mental health clearly it got her to, you know, it affected her somehow <laughs> right oh and isn't it awesome so what does your genie tell us a little bit more about your coaching services so just to be clear you work with the actual genies you're not going to invite the parents to come through for the coaching right no, um, the parents, there's a different support um, system where we call, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, um, fixing the environment. Okay. You know, because, yes, because we, we um, there's a say that I've actually paraphrased from you and likely <laughs> I tell you in the, in the group because you have to say of it's never about the money. Yes. But for me, then it said it's never about the genie you know yeah. because um a parent will be having a bad day and then the very same um uh, response i'm not response the very same action that oreo did yesterday just because today i'm having a bad day now suddenly i'm reacting mm -hmm. different to the same action so then there's a different support group for parents where we actually manage the environment and not the child because I believe I the, genies, yeah, the genies are innocent, you know, yes. and they, they, they are just being themselves. So we need to really learn to manage the environment and the environments are us, the genie muscles and the genie puzzles and all the mm. relatives around. Yes. But my main love and focus is actually working with the genies where um, I nurture and preserve because it's there. And yes. you know, the only reason why there's a big gap when I'm a 33 year old and want to go barefoot that it's you know, abnormal is because of that gap of somehow after seven, well, I push it up to 10 because I still believe in, you know, love versus uh, fear where you yeah. can always work out when we remove the fear. But yes. that gap of what happens between after being seven and now suddenly being an adult. You know, yeah. so if we are, yeah, I, I, I believe that if we work on making sure that we nurture the whole innocence and preserve it until seven years, by the time they get to the age where now they are no longer working from the root chakra, now they are going into the next level, then they know that they are good enough. I know I, I struggle with good enoughness, I struggle with, um, you know, grounding and safety because mm -hmm. I feel like it was never nurtured. But if we nurture that, you know, 
being an adult, you know that it's okay to work, to work barefoot because I'm good enough. You know, I don't need yeah. heels and 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 you know Gucci bags for me to be. <laughs> Extra. Yeah. And also I'm just thinking as you're talking, like you're also talking about how ha- helping children form healthy attachments. Most of us, like myself included, right? Like I struggle with relationshiping. I struggle a lot in romantic relationships because I don't know how to form healthy attachments because so much of my parenting, especially when it came to my mom, it was very much like up and down. It was like one, that parenting that you speak about one day, what you do is good. The very, for me, it wasn't even the very next day, the very next hour you're getting slapped because now you're doing it for too much. Do something else. Are you in all sorts of things, you know? So there's like no patience. So what I learned was that actually, if you get attached to people, the people that you love can turn on you like, that so don't attach to people so a lot of the work that I've been doing with my relationship coaches has been how do I feel safe like in intimate situations and especially emotionally attaching to other human beings you know it started with me learning how to do friendship properly and then learning how to um relationship just in general in life like Wow, I feel like I did that, but I did that in my teens in therapy. So that worked very, very well. And obviously my therapist in my teens couldn't start teaching me how to relationship in romantic relationships. (laughs) But I learned how to friendship really well. By the time I was in university, I knew how to do the whole relationshiping within a friendship aspect how to hold space for strangers acquaintances etc and now as an adult it's about that but it comes from the first seven years well for me the whole of childhood and teens <laughs> but I get what you're saying and, and as you were saying something came to my mind to say um I've realized with genies that they and and I don't think it's a bad thing. Maybe we make it a bad thing, but they feel that the world revolves around them. So even <laughs> when you, as a as a parent, react because you allow somebody upset you at work, they yes. always think it, I did something yes. wrong. Yes. You know. Yes. So because when they manage- sort of have enough knowledge of the world, right? Yes. So yes. you are their world, and their world is them and their friends. They don't know that. And they can't fathom that there's like 7 billion people on this planet. It's just, you can't expect them to understand that. Like, you know, so many adults still don't know that, that the world doesn't revolve around them. (laughs) Yes. So the the whole idea of managing the environment then goes there to say, at this moment, this is where the genie is. And this is the understanding. But also trying to preserve the genie and not saying, um, well, the world doesn't revolve around you. Because what I've realized with, mm. with Oreo is that, not actually not just with Oreo, with all the kids that have, uh, the genies that I've interacted with is that they get, it's just a matter of satisfaction. If you yes. do it long enough, you, you get over it, you know. And I think you've also taught us with, with the feeling of your own yeah. feelings in the body. If you yeah. don't run away from it, you know, yes. it goes away. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think that's the thing. Like, if you give them the attention that they want right now, they will like, after a while, they will get bored of you because you've given them that attention and they will go and do their own thing. But also noticing that kids are different. Different mm-hmm. kids come with different souls into this world, right? Different yeah. past life experiences. So one child may not need as much attention and love and constant reassurance as another. Another may be like, I just need you to say something for five minutes and then just leave me alone, right? And I find that most of us don't understand that. And it's something that I, I've i often had to talk about even at home with my family, with my nieces, where I'm like, Kids, it's not that when a child is asking for attention, constant attention, and you've given them the same amount of attention as their sibling or the other child, that if they react in a particular manner, then there's this like, oh my God, she's constantly looking for attention, et cetera. I'm like, 
but you don't know what lifetime this child comes from, yes. right? And what she is trying to heal from and why she needs attention. And you don't know what, what you were to her in that past life, you know, and why she's reacting this way. So you need to nurture that in the child. I think we have these expectations where children will be the same, that if we give one thing to a child, the other child will also be satisfied with that thing. And the truth is that they not. They're not. Souls are completely different. And I think it's because we don't see children as their own unique souls. That has been one of the challenges that I find. We're just humans, right? We see children as like miniature people that are like us reason like us or that reason like each other and it's like that is not true every child is uniquely different because every soul has come into this particular world from a different dimension a different galaxy a different lifetime that we don't understand we don't know what they've been through in different lifetimes so they've now come through and it's our responsibility to work with the soul um, it's, it's quite interesting that you'll say that because um, in the Genie Coach podcast, um, I think about four, if not five guests have already actually emphasized on that exact point, just wow. say, you know, so, so I think, uh, you know, the divinity wants me to hear it again and, and again, <laughs> because, yeah. you know, to say um, they are not mini gods, you know, yes. even if they are mini, or they are not mini divinity. They're still yes. divine, even though their their body looks and and and, and we see them as as little. Yeah. But you know, and and I know Casey in one of the episodes of the money. Um, look at me, money magic. <laughs> Casey in the genie coach podcast. She also said she refers to the genies as young people, with the hope that when we now see that they are still people, yes. it's just that at the moment they are young, but they are still yeah. people. Maybe we might actually consider treating them differently you know so oh, thank you for one holds hope we yeah. hold hope that humans will treat them that way <laughs> <laughs> but i love love what you do right so let um let's move on to really understanding your relationship with money and trauma what does money mean to you how would you describe money to an alien sure um I think I've been a year now in the money magic course and yep. it has changed a lot, but this one is the one that now my spirit is really very happy with, that yeah. money's energy. Um, yeah. And the reason why I say money's energy is because of the flow, the mm. movement, you know. Um, I was that one person who um, equated my worth to the amount in my bank account. Um, yeah. or, and also the amount in my purse, you know. Yes. And I was also that person that didn't want any block or stagnation. But then as soon as I treated money like energy, I was like, hold on, but energy can still be stuck. And if you don't use it, because I even went to the electric current to say, if the oh. kettle is not on, it doesn't mean that there's no energy moving in there. It just yes. needs to press the button and then the kettle will, you know, when you need it. Wow. And you don't even need to see it that it's there, but you know consciously that it's there. So for me, <laughs> it's just saying money's energy. It's always there, even though I don't see it. And it really has nothing to do about what I can see at that moment. As long as I know that what I need at that moment is enough. Mm -hmm. Wow, yo, every time like I bring a guest on this show, like I have to think and think and I'm like everyone's got such a different, but such an interesting view of money. The views are different, but similar. The core at the core of them, just yeah, no, I like that electric current. Thank you for teaching us about that. That is so powerful because Obviously, there's current. It's just that you're not switching it on. So you're not Jeez, tapping okay. into the energy of the entire electrical circuit. So that makes sense that like money is constantly in circulation around us, right? That's like one of my explanations as well that I talk about in the course that there's money constantly in circulation around us. And it's just all about like, how do we 
become part how do we uh, kind of like tap into that money mm -hmm. that's in circulation so that part of it circulates to us right because we're also taking money out of circulation and uh, in our lives and taking it into the circ into the general pool of circulation so why is it so difficult for us to allow part of that circulation to come back to us right and a lot of that is because of how we view the circulation process we've been taught like my oh my pet hate they're being taught that we have to earn once a month that you wait for your money to come in once a month like why can't money constantly be coming into your bank account throughout the month throughout the month you know <laughs> especially if you're an entrepreneur and a business person it's like there's no reason why money cannot constantly be coming into your business and flowing into your life. So, yeah. And um, just to add, I feel I wouldn't do justice to my own money trauma if I didn't talk about the blocks within that whole current. Uh, because yeah. I think that's, that, you know, that was very powerful for me to learn. To say, yeah. even, though the, even though there's um, electric current in the plug, mm -hmm there can be blocks where maybe the, 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 um, the three pin doesn't work or the yeah. whole, um, what you call it, the whole element doesn't work or maybe there's no electricity. But sometimes you don't just take the kettle just because it did not boil then, you don't just take it and put it into the dustbin. You know, you have to first check, yes. did I put it on? Is the cot maybe not connected well? Is the element maybe uh, the fuse not working? Should I replace just yeah. the fuse? You know, you don't re you don't go to a uh, game and buy a new kettle every time. You know, you give exactly. it time. What really is the challenge? Do I have enough electricity? Is it load shedding? But then yeah. with our money, immediately you feel like you know things are not working. You already feel like you need a new kettle. There, there is a time where you can go to game and buy a new one when the system yeah. is not working. Like the once a month getting paid, you know, for me. I yeah, like these are the like, <laughs> how we talk about it. away and get a new one. But you don't yeah. all, every time when your money is not flowing, just throw the whole baby into the bathtub. I, I know you like saying that. Right? Like, that's my thing. It's like, we're always like, that's the thing. It's like, oh, I'm doing this now. Something isn't working out. And you don't even give it time and you chuck out the whole business idea. You know, <laughs> like how I talk about how there's people that are constantly starting new ideas in the Money Magic course. It's like, you haven't even had the business for like three months. We don't know what your challenge is in business because every time you are changing a strategy, you're chucking it out. So like, you even don't know is are you good at live videos it po is podcasting your thing is writing your thing because you haven't given it time you haven't explored how you feel so it's the same with money so many of us are we look at what our friends are doing around money and as long as this is what working for the new friend we hop on that oh my friend is making a killing in herbal life nami i'm in herbal life oh my other friend is making a killing in bitcoin Forget everything else now I'm at Bitcoin. Oh gosh. And we do that so much, you know? It makes sense to Before me. Before I got into the course, I like I'm imagining me with about 50 turtles in my kitchen <laughs> just because every time somebody tells me about a different kettle, I don't take one kettle and see yeah. the element or the fusion or the current. I go and buy another one. Now I'm with 50 kettles and I don't even know which one to use now because they're overwhelming. Well, you're one of those. You're doing Avon, you're doing Herbal Life, you're doing, oh my gosh, you know, don't tell me. So when I'm doing, when I'm talking about all this in the student course. They're talking about me. <laughs> oh my God, that is hilarious. Because I, I grew up around people like that, you know, and I still have family members like that. No offense, right? Like, I always just keep it moving. And it's weird because I'm like, I should support. I'm a supporter. But then at times, at some point, I'm like, mm, guys, no, it doesn't make sense. Because now you're selling Avon. You're selling Herbalife. Now someone comes and they tell you about Neolife, which used to be golden products. Now you're selling that. You're sell It's like, no, man. That's like you're doing the most like what is it that you actually do how many resources do you have to be 
it's not, there's nothing wrong with having these multiple streams of income. Mm. But like we talk about in the Money Magic Student Group, many people do this with limited time. So you're selling Avon, you're selling Herbalife, you're selling clothes, you're also coaching, you're running a bakery, because the belief is that like, the more I do, the more I'm able to achieve. And this is how one creates extra streams of income. But then like you are spread so thin, you have no time to do anything, right? And for most of us, I know when we talk of extra streams of income, people always assume that we mean like do so many different things so all at once. Things. And it's like, no, as you know, from the Money Magic course, there's an actual strategy of doing this with mm -hmm. ease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can't believe I've been talking about you in so many of these classes. <laughs> <laughs> The nice thing about it is it was so true, you know, because I, I, my spirit was exhausted the whole time I did it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's why also, because I think you heard what I was saying and you were like, this is me. Let me try a different way because she's <laughs> just described my life. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's hilarious. I know that feeling though. I mean, I saw it and I also know when I started out, I also got caught up in that when I started entrepreneurship that the more I do, the more opportunities I give for money to come to me and whew, it was not fun. And it was the opposite for me though, because when I didn't do those things, I seemed to have money. But as soon as I drew them, then it was like, like even moonlight. Same with, moon. I feel, but that makes sense to me because like you're doing the most, you're not even allowing money to come find you because you're all over the place and you're overwhelmed. You're, mm -hmm. you're extremely exhausted. So how do you give money an opportunity to come and find you? <laughs> right? Like you're too busy even for money. For and money. this is what I, this is the problem I have with hustle culture, right? Because mm. what you've just said is so poignant because you're like, when I didn't do any of those things and then I chilled, I relaxed, money found me. It found me. <laughs> <laughs> I made money, but when I was all over the place and I was hustling and hashtag team no sleep, right? <laughs> Like I was not able to make money. This is why I'm always like, when people come to me with hustle culture, I'm just like, I appreciate your energy and I respect this entrepreneurial energy and I respect your hustle, but I'm gonna have to ask you not to come around me when you are in hustle mode. Because it, it makes me overwhelmed being yeah. around someone who's juggling so many different things and it hustling does. to the max in that manner. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I completely get you. So when did you start suspecting that your money story wasn't just about the money? Although I think we can all guess from this conversation, right? When did you start realizing also that it's not that for me to increase my savings, there's more to this than budgeting? <laughs> when I was doing network marketing, oh gosh. Oh gosh, I don't wanna go back there. <laughs> I guess I'm grateful for the experience because I wouldn't have known, you know, mm. but it's, it's one of those days that I feel like they never existed because, and, and, you know, the, the sad part is I started um, network marketing when I already had my first child. Mm. So I think the pain of having to go and do a presentation on Saturday and leaving here, you know, we would wow. go to send 10 um, for my gang. It's almost like 300 sure. kilos. I leave in the morning while she's still sleeping. When I come back, she's sleeping. It was really painful. And, and oh unfortunately gosh. at that time, I also had a, a male who was coaching me. And yeah. he was all for, you need to rank up. This is what we must do, you know? So it was really about <laughs> the money because when I rank up, he also ranks up. You know, I, I felt like he didn't really care about me as long as I make him yeah. rank up and make the money. Yeah, but, I think, but, and but, also I think you know. that you were being coached from the masculine standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. is like, 
Hey, the fact that like your womb, your breasts are crying, they want your baby. How can he understand that? Because we can only coach someone from our perspective most times, unless he's gone in and he's done his work around understanding the feminine and the womb, and he's connected with his own inner feminine, right? But we live in a world that says that this is what you do for money. So this is why even when we are on our period, we're expected for three full days, the first three days to work as though it is business as usual. What the F would you ask someone that's bleeding from their eyes and their ears or anywhere else to do that amount of work? No, but because I'm bleeding in a place that you cannot see and you just hear it as theory, it's okay. We, our workspaces, the corporate culture, everything expects us to work business as usual. Whereas, you know, when you lose blood, you're getting weaker. So it makes yeah. sense that if we're using this much blood, we won't have as much mm -hmm. energy and we won't be as strong and we'd want to, we'd need to rest. And yet what would, what the culture tells us, because we're still living in such a male dominated culture is to just pop a pill, you know, get rid mm -hmm. of the pains. Like, what is your womb saying? F that, there's no time for that. Keep ranking up. Oh, you just, have a, you just had a baby. Well, then they'll tell you things like, let the baby motivate you. Do it for your baby. I think that you're like, I'm not a mom yet, but I'm guessing that a child would rather have you there, have you there with them, feel your warmth, really attached to you, than have you telling them that you're hustling for their future. And, and actually, that was my breaking point, you know. I ended up saying, um, I would rather be with my daughter and have pop and milk every day yeah. than have to miss her and give her toys. And, and Because also coming from yeah. um, a mental health space, I've yeah. seen a lot of kids in the rehab centers where their parents gave them everything and not the time you know yes. and then they would say we don't understand he wanted an iphone he has this expensive lacosta shoe so i got to understand really from a nursing perspective mm. that time is more important and connecting mm. with the child so then i was like ah, oh. yo, you know what i'll rather have pop and milk with my daughter and see that she's happy than have yes. all this fancy glam and then i'm still feeling so empty and you know yeah. And likely that's when I met you to say, hey, there's another way to <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. I so, I love that, right? Because I'm such a believer in that because I, I honestly don't understand how it benefits mothers and just women, even if you're not a mom and you just have a womb so it just people should I just say people with wombs and just even men you know I don't know how it benefits anyone in the system to be hustling day and night and not giving our bodies rest not spending time with our kids not spending time with our friends just not spending time in nature because I mean at the end of the day our relationships are bad with children, with parents, et cetera, because we never give them the time and we never prioritize them. And so then we're like, yeah, but at least we made money. We're gonna end up, our children will, what we're do, definitely going to be doing in that case is perpetuating generational trauma because especially around money, because our children then grow up to blame money for not having our love, right? Yeah. So what we think is helping them often ends up being an issue in the long run with their relationship with money and their relationship with us, right? Yeah. So I think this is so powerful, this decision that you made to develop your relationship with money in a different manner and to make money in a different manner. Hmm, this is so awesome. So when you first heard about the Money Magic course, <laughs> probably you were like, oh yeah, like I hear all this, but I'm always interested in hearing what people thought that we would be doing. What did you imagine it was? And what did you think we would be doing in the course? Um, to be honest, I, like I said, you got me at my lowest. Mm. Um, so I had already tried everything and I knew what I did not want. Mm. 
Yeah. I just didn't know what I wanted. Yeah. So I knew that the hustle culture is not for me. And when <laughs> I, the first time I saw your videos, it was from the Property Hub Club, where oh, you spoke about the relationship yeah. with a yeah, woman's relationship with money that is different. And yeah, I that only, was with, um, it's run by Carlo. Oh, yeah. yeah. So then I was like, you know, um, I'm not sure what is happening here, but whatever she's talking about, I can resonate with, and it's definitely not falling into the things I don't want. So it's <laughs> worth trying because I'd already tried everything. So trying something one more time wouldn't hurt. You know, I was at that point. Yeah, let's That's take the awesome. Books. <laughs> you know, I love that. <laughs> and, and for me, um, even though you spoke about the relationship with with money, and that is different. I also signed up for your master class about the seven mistakes. So yes. I, yeah, I had an idea of, okay, it's definitely not going to take me out and go and hustle and <laughs> convince people to buy from me and make them feel guilty because that was the, the most painful oh one. Gosh. Oh my gosh, that is so hard, right? Like guilt tripping people. Uh, <laughs> But definitely okay you do come from this background because i talk a lot about this guys <laughs> in the student group where i say to people please let us not be the people who are on facebook and saying to people oh everybody wants money but nobody wants to sell why are we fighting now i want money but why is the next statement of like shaming me and make, why are we going into fighting mode because the minute you say that you've started to make people feel bad about the fact that they don't want to sell they don't want to do anything else the real question people should be really working on understanding what is it about selling that puts people off maybe because we make statements like that you know yes yes <laughs> and also um, something powerful that you said on the same uh, seven mistakes that people do was mm -hmm. that um, that thing of you need you can't let somebody go without having their credit card details. I know how it made me feel to give somebody my credit card details, yeah. and also asking people to give me their credit card details when I was not even comfortable. So when I I heard you saying no to that, I was like, okay. This is something I can do. I know? despise that. <laughs> and you guys know that's why I canceled. So guys, if you're listening, I canceled a huge, um, I was working with these coaches, super expensive. And I'd already paid like 12,000 US dollars for the coaching program. And I had another 12,000 to pay. I absolutely canceled it because this is what they were teaching. And it went against everything in my belief system. And they were trying to get me, they were trying to convince me that this is one way to sell. And I remember having a conversation with my sister and honey was like, well, you've been doing whatever the hell you've been doing. <laughs> that may not be the usual thing in terms of sales, but it's been working for you. You've grown this business to this point without having to do that. And you've been teaching other people not to do that. And they are having great success as well. So maybe it's just stick to what you teach, which is the inner work that you don't have to do that. Because I also know what that feels like when someone does that. It's not giving me time when I'm like, ah, I need to think about it. And then arguing with me about the fact that I need to go home and think about it, right? As opposed to what I've appreciated is when I've said, I need to think about this. And someone is like, yeah, hit me up in, at any point if you want, if you have any other questions, you want to talk about this more mm. and you just want to understand it at a deeper level or you just want to work through some beliefs that you have, I'm available for that. That has been extremely helpful for me, you know, where I'm like, I really want to do this and I really want to purchase this but I am not sure, or I'm scared about how am I gonna do the repayments? Do you mind working through this with me? That has been so much more powerful than, oh my gosh, if you don't do this, then you're not really serious about ABCD. Or like, if you're not buying these Herbalife products and you say you wanna lose weight, then you're really not serious about weight loss. Hello, I may be serious about weight loss, but 
Maybe I've tried a bunch of other diet pills that have not worked for me. And now I have doubts about what makes this product so good. You like, I want questions. I want answers to the questions I have. <laughs> yeah. I think that was also what was powerful for me joining the money magic um, um, course. Because mm -hmm. I I think I, I saw your first video in 2019, yeah. um, <laughs> around June. I yes. liked it. I followed you on Facebook. I read your post. And, you know, I, I knew this was something that I'm going to do. And the fact yes. that you did not pressurize me helped a lot, you know, <laughs> because even your, 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 when you share your story and then at the end you invite us, the invitation doesn't say, if you don't do it today, you'll never fix your money story, you know, it, it, you know, so, yeah. and, and it even took two money magic um, student series that I listened to on womb work, uh, polite yeah. and pertinence for me to yeah. decide. I remember sending you, an email to say, um, if this is not spirit telling me to join, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> I was already talking spirit then. I didn't even know where the word spirit was coming from. Yeah, you were like, no, I yeah, I know. Like, this is this is it. This is this talking is to me. It has to happen. And I love that. This is why, like, and you've seen how in the student group, when like the student group is so amazing. And I, I've explained mm -hmm. often to the students, it's because I definitely believe that a huge part of it is that everyone that is there, their spirit resonated with being in the course yeah. and they weren't being forced to come in the course. So when they come, they come ready. They come wanting to share things. They don't feel like, oh my gosh, I've been forced into something. You know, it's just like people come willing and ready and it creates this incredible community. Whereas yeah. if... I feel like if people have come shamed, then there's also an element of if I share the truth about my finances and my life history and my relationship with my mom or my dad or whatever, the shaming is going to continue, mm -hmm. you know, and there's so much pressure that, oh, my gosh, you need to produce or break through. And that's also the other thing. It's like not forcing people to feel like they have to share a victory or to break through. It's one of the things that I'm really adamant about in the course, you know, it's like wherever you are in your journey, that is where you are because Lord knows <laughs> I've cried in live videos. I've gone through the most, I am not the most put together person, <laughs> even as the teacher. And I feel like that is so important that as we go through our journeys, especially because money is so triggering, we allow people to be. So that's why I feel like it has to start even from the selling process. And yet I do know the sales scripts that were given are basically triggering. They're not nervous system friendly, you know? And I think that's why a lot of us hate business and selling. <laughs> yeah so how has your definition of trauma changed Mewa, since starting the course what is your understanding of ancestral trauma in relation to money now and before you come from a psychiatric background so you understand trauma you understand mental health so how has your definition started to change how has your understanding started to change or maybe not change but even deepen um, actually, when you ask that question, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a visual person. So whenever somebody talks, I already see. <laughs> so I know so you're a visual person from how you answer from the meditations. You tell us about waterfalls, things you saw. I'm always like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I think that's the, the nice thing because the genies get me so, you know, quicker. Yeah. I think that's why I was called to work with the genies because we go to Wonderland, hey? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for you to write children's books. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> um, so when you spoke trauma, it took me back to my training as a student nurse. Mm -hmm. Initially, trauma was accidents, casualty, 
broken bones, mm. you know. And then I became a, a psych nurse. Yes. And then trauma was, you know, PTSD, uh, being gang raped, because those are the, the cases sure. that we were getting, you know. Um, there was also a, a, a case that still stuck with me of a mother who had a psychotic episode and then sliced their kids because they thought it was bread. You know, I'm sorry to be sharing that deep, but that's something that oh came. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so there was trauma, or my understanding was trauma from a, yeah. a nursing perspective and mental health point. And then I joined uh, the Money Magic course. And then I realized that Oreo knocking and saying hi mom and then me dismissing her because I'm busy with anti vangula makwakwa <laughs> that is also trauma you know yes each soul is unique as you've said and based on their past lives and you know even their their life in the womb yes anything can be a trauma yes even me saying hello to you could actually trigger a, a trauma response somehow because it reminds you of something. So yeah, my, you my... may be dressed in a particular <laughs> outfit. Like, think of how we all react. Most of us react to clowns. I hate clowns, right? I couldn't even watch the movie that everyone talks about it. I couldn't read. I've read a lot of Stephen King's books. I couldn't read that book because it had that clowns book. in it. I couldn't <laughs> watch it because precisely because of that. Some people may be like, clowns do nothing for me you know and it may not freak you out when you see a clown just seeing a clown and mm -hmm. a clown coming to say hi to you but for someone like me a clown coming to say hi to me triggers the heck out of me I'm like no this is not okay <laughs> go away <laughs> it's different it, it to work more with the um, psych training when we, uh, we read about conditioning you know Mm -hmm. To say, um, 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 when something constantly happens to you, even something that seems like mm -hmm. the event that you've experienced can be trauma. So we, we shouldn't want to take it from a face level that I just said hello, you know. Yes. That hello goes deeper than just a hello, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, trauma has deepened, especially working with the genies to say, I must take them as souls. And mm. each and every feeling is valid. Sure. That's how trauma took me to, to say each and every feeling is valid because trauma oh. is subjective. <laughs> yes, it really is, right? And I love that you said that, that even a hello can be traumatic to me and it may not be traumatic to you because maybe I'm getting a hello from an, from an an abuser of mine and they may traumatize me. Phew, that is so, so deep. And I think I'm hoping as people are listening to this, it helps them understand why some people will react violently to someone just saying hi to them or even touching them. And why another person will be like, hey, hug that same person in a particular manner, right? Because we all have different responses. We all perceiving the event differently. Hmm. So I'm very interested. How has your feelings about money changed? So before, how did you feel emotionally about money? You told us your financial behavior and how you used to hustle, etc. How did your how did you feel about money before the course? And then now that you've done the money magic course, how do you feel about money? Uh, as you're doing the course, not have done it because it's a lifetime <laughs> course. <laughs> Yo, um, number one, I don't think I would have been able to say yes to the series um, on this day particular if I wasn't on the course because it's month end. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh my yes. gosh, it is month end that we're recording this. Oh crap. Like, yeah. I mean, so, like, I know it's month end. Intellectually, I know it's month end, but <laughs> I've gotten to the point where, like, every day is month end. <laughs> I don't get that it's month end. You know, it's just a day. Every day is month end. <laughs> I love it. Every day is month end. You know, so, so I I used to, and and it was even that um, from twenty eighth until the fourth, 
Mm. I become somebody else, you know. Even when the money was enough, I worried. Mm. Like it, it was just that, you know. And and I shared in the wow. in the group this week to say I'm having some uh, difficult financial decision that I have to do. But I'm, I can sense that I'm doing it from a karma never system. Like even when I get into the meditation, because you've taught us to ask questions and, and yeah. ask, you know, interrogate the feelings. Yes. Even when I go into the meditation and ask, I'm sure I'm skating in ice. Like really, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a matter of, I think um, as we've been talking about masculine and feminine, I think it's just a matter of really choosing the right strategy for the problem at this time. But it's yeah. not it's not including all those wires of oh that's not enough. Oh, what if I make the you know the, the nervous system is regulated on the side. It's just me. Yes. And I only have yeah, and I only have two choices, which are both going to work out. It's just the one that has more ease and more, yeah. you know, that comes that resonates. You know, I love so, that. It's like, well, every any cho- both choices are going to work out. Are I going to work out. Yes. Yes, which one do I want? But like, and I think the thing that trips most of us up, you've just mentioned it, right? Is that it's not the fact we because we are in such a deep emotional state. When we look at money, we're not seeing the numbers on the screen. We're not seeing the numbers on our bank account. We are literally bringing all the trauma we're seeing our mother shouting we're seeing our father freaking out about money we're seeing our sister losing her house we're seeing everything but the numbers and then once you've started to heal that it's just like this is the situation what do i need to do to get out of it now you're like dealing with facts as opposed to dealing with all the other triggers. So most of us are never dealing with the actual money itself. That's why I say it's never about the money because so many of us are actually dealing with, oh my God, what will my friends say? What mm-hmm. this and this? <laughs> and then the money comes later that we're actually making the financial decisions based on the money. <laughs> yeah, so ooh, thank you for that. Um, I really love that. So what are some of your income and savings shifts and even debt shifts that you've seen from being in the Money Magic course? In this doing- one I wrote. Oh, so <laughs> this one's I wrote down because I didn't want to forget them. <laughs> okay. The, the first shift, funny enough, happened as I was making the intention to join the course. Ah, yes. I remember you messaging me. <laughs> yes. Tell us about I, it. Yes, I, I said, um, currently I don't have money. I was, I was on maternity. Currently mm-hmm. I don't have money. I don't know where this amount is going to come in. There was an option of actually doing 12 months, uh, 24 months. But my spirit said, no, you're going to do this in six months. Yeah. Message uh, it's been and ask, 12 months, the maximum has been 15 months, but yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, 15 years, yes. And then my spirit said, No, you're going to do this in six months, not yeah. longer than that, you know, yeah. And then that's where I messaged you and said, Um, is it possible to do it? I'm recording, hey, wait, I will call you. I'm recording, please. <laughs> That's Ario, guys. Noah's little girl. She is so beautiful <laughs> and so cute. <laughs> I'll call you. I'll call you, I promise. Hi, hi, Ario. We're still recording. Your mommy and I are still busy. I will say goodbye before I leave. I promise I will not forget to say goodbye. <laughs> I guess because Newa has been playing uh, my videos and everything, she just she's just grown to love me <laughs> over the over the last few months. So it's been just beautiful <laughs> hearing her stories also from Newa. <laughs> And she refuses to call you only Auntie Vangile. She wants to say it with the same name. I think to her it's one name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
That's yeah. Awesome. So um, I made a decision to do it in six months. I didn't know when the money was going to come. I only had money for the first two months, yeah. but then I lived, and then I said we'll see. And within five months, I had fully paid the 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 cost. Yes. So that was like like we always say, as if like magic. For some reason, like- money, money, money showed up. You know, I didn't even have to hustle. I didn't even have to think because I was in maternity. Yeah. Leave, you know, my biggest thing was making sure that I had enough milk to breastfeed this <laughs> baby that just wanted to have milk and breast milk the whole time. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was my biggest breakthrough. When I always say my other sayings is when we show up for money, money shows up for us, right? So when we show up and we do the work around money and we keep doing the work, money shows up for us. <laughs> the other shift was stop treating money like a stranger mm. and you taught us that um, if money was a lover how would you treat mm. your money you know so yeah. I, I, I the checkings you know no because before I didn't even know how much money I had and that's why I would panic yes um, just, yes. just like this, this, this month and because I knew where my money was, I could say, oh, I remember I have a thousand in one of the accounts that I never used. So if I take that thousand and put it here, I'll be able to make it for the debit order, you know? So I could, but before I had money scattered around and because I'm seeing only this one that is in my bank account, I don't make that mental map of saying no, but there's a savings account that I never used since two, uh, five years back, but it has money there. And even the interest has, you know, accumulated, uh, it has an extra 500 for the interest because it's been five years. So that has been the biggest shift for me to really say, come back to center. This is yeah. what is happening at this moment. Mm-hmm. Are you really that hopeless or are there other means of doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then my biggest shift was also taking out the shame. Um, being the professional, the graduate, I always thought I'm supposed to always have money. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, but that's how we're made to feel, right? Is that like you're supposed to always have money because you're a graduate. And then when you don't, the shame around that. Shame around that. You're talking to me around that shame. Like it was one of, (laughs) it crippled me. I'm not going to lie. It's one of the things that like completely crippled me emotionally for years that shame and, and I remember you used to share the, the story of actually taking from a credit card to borrow your cousin or your friend because of the shame I did that yes oh I wow did that. because yeah. I didn't want people to know that I don't have money I had to you're covering up you know you're yeah. like no they can't know because how can they come to me and I'm this whole graduate and then they asking me they asking to borrow money from me and then they met with I don't have money, you know, like that saying, I don't have money or I can't borrow you. I, the money I have is just for myself. And I think even just adding to that, um, learning to say, I don't have money. And Mm -hmm. if maybe there's an explanation, keeping it short, because I've also realized that over explaining is also a trauma response. It is. You you want to, you know, (laughs) I want to really explain, no, I have this 100,000 that is in my savings, but because, no, mm. so we don't have money now, so. Yeah, like, oh, I just, oh, literally, I don't have money for whatever you have planned or for you. The money for I you. have is for me and for my budget. This and is my how kids. I budget it yes. is. And my kids. That is an explanation enough, hey? Like, the money, well, it makes sense that the money you okay. earn and the money you have right now is for you and your kids. <laughs> and and I remember I, I got I think I lost a friend because we haven't spoken in three months since that incident. He asked me to pay for something for him. And then I asked him when and how am I going because he's staying in another country. And I said, yeah. when and how am I going to get my money back? Mm. And then suddenly he was like, yo, we are no longer friends. I was like, no, because before I couldn't, you know, you'll owe me, I would just you know hate you in my heart and never even say anything or remind you but no I was like "Ah, money as a lover I'm cleaning you 
Sure. Oh my gosh, you just remind me. I have a friend. I don't even remember what happened to this friend, the Zimbabwean guy friend that I met in the UK. And then when I was on my money journey, he borrowed $2,000 and was like, you know, he was living in Dubai. He's like, I'm borrowing, you know, I live in Dubai. I'm asking for $2,000 and then I'll pay you back. So this was when I was starting my money journey. I just started getting debt free. So this whole setting of boundaries was new to me. He was watching. He was, I hadn't even started doing live videos then, but he was reading the blog. He'd read Heart, Mind and Money. So he kind of knew that I had money because I didn't know, I hadn't done the work around how do I set boundaries and asking those questions that I now teach you guys to ask. I went and I gave him $2,000, you know. Do you know that that guy has never spoken to me since? That was like six years ago. Ah, I kid really? you not. I even forget, I've even forgotten about it. Like I would try to call him and get him on the phone. Guys, $2,000, hey, that's kind of like nice money. And I just, and not me, I just gave it. Cause he's like, I was thinking to myself, why would he lie about paying it back in a few days. And he did say to me, he's in Dubai. Again, that whole perception of how we see people and perceive things, right? Thank so you. like, obviously he's gonna pay it back. Now, <laughs> now that you remind me, I'm like, you know what he did with part of that money? He went and he basically patched up to buy himself a convertible that he posted. Oh my word. <laughs> And then he blocked me and stopped responding to my WhatsApps and all my phone, no, all my phone numbers. <laughs> we live and we learn, guys. That's okay. <laughs> and then the realization was, um, I or oh, the breakthrough, the money shift. I was stuck in the same income set point for seven years without realizing it. Oh and I don't God. think without the course, I would have realized, you know, I've moved from a professional desk to an assistant director now, but I'm still getting the same. <laughs> wow, Neo, and you were getting the same and you're getting was, the same amount of money. Yes. I, I don't know how to put it, but it was more like the, the same side point because yes, it increased maybe with a, a, a thousand or something. But that thousand would be replaced by Oreo now because I have to buy diapers. So it was like I, I couldn't expand. You know, it, it made me to afford the You same couldn't things. get more money. Yes. No, so, so you were at your income set point. I was at my income set you point. You know, there is nothing sad, more sad and scary than that. And I think I know a lot of people are listening in on this that like even when you move to a new company, you end up getting the same. A salary yeah. you move to a new job you get promoted you don't get the promotion that comes with that job but yours your colleagues and everyone around you it doesn't work like that for them because they don't have the same set point and the same drama that you have around money so they're getting they are getting an up level when they get new jobs and when they get yeah. promotions who that and, is so I think that's about that's about five different companies and jobs and oh. every time the the title really went big because like i'm telling you now it's the assistant yeah. director but still i'm telling you my life well now there's a shift but now there's because you've done the work right because I've done the work and also because of the the awareness you know yes uh, awareness is really key because then i could yes. see now from the whole current way is my my energy being blocked for the kettle yes. to start lighting and giving me boiling water, you know. Yeah, just so, out of interest, what, um, if you don't mind sharing with us, I mean, you don't have to share the deep uh, traumas or blocks, but what was one of the major blocks that you noticed that was keeping you at the same set point for seven years? Um, it was actually a mother wound. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. yeah, say no more, like, I am there. That is, guys, my core wounding, the mother wound. That will do you in. Because yeah. and one of the things of the mother wound is that my mother struggled and never made this amount of money. So I'm going to remain loyal to my mother's struggles and not yeah. allow myself to up level beyond my mother. Yeah. On the surface, it seems like love. 
but underneath it is also a deep mother wound, right? Mother wound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was then, that yours as well? That like, because my mother struggled, I cannot then, allow myself to thrive and enjoy things yeah. in things that she's never enjoyed, right? And never had. I also not wanting to outshine and brag, you know, it didn't yeah. feel safe to outshine and brag and, and, and but also because a child wouldn't, um, child would, wouldn't, I was always told that I was too much. So mm -hmm. me expanding would actually make me too much because obviously as a black child, first thing when you up level, you go to the suburb, you buy a big car. So I wouldn't want to, you know, I'd be odd and, and, and be seen like I'm not part of the tribe when I go home, then I'm in this. Mm -hmm. Because I've even realized I've changed cars four times and actually my cars look the same. Somebody who doesn't really know about cars wouldn't even realize that I've changed cars because I'll go for the gray color, I'll go for the same shape. It's just that it's a new My model. sister has been on my case. She pointed this out to one of my cousins and me that like, this is how we roll. I was like, how can I be a money magic student and still not see this? But like, you know, sometimes, and of course, the minute she said that, the penny dropped. She only had to explain it for five minutes. She's like, I think that you have a, a wound, like you have a, a, your vow of invisibility is really strong and this is how it's playing out. It's like, say what? Like, what the heck? You know, because we do these things and it's so unconscious. Like, how can you change cars four times and get like the same color, almost same make? And I so resonate with that because, wow, you are talking to me. <laughs> and then the last shift, this really is a brag. Um, <laughs> the, the past six months I was doing, we, you know, we have this thing where you have to at least have one day a week where you check in with your finances to really see yes. where you are. And then I felt called to, and thanks to my journal being full, because my money journal was full. So I was, yes. using it more. And I was like, but let me see what is it that I can take from the old journal and put it in here. And then I didn't mm -hmm. want to write or make a summer or anything. Then something said, the numbers don't lie. So then I yes. did a six months a review of my finances. Yeah. Guess what? In that six months, I made my annual income goal. In the one that I get months. at work in six <gasps> months, I made that. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my okay. gosh, Neo. <laughs> I'm telling you, like I, I had to repeat and calculate and use a cell phone calculator and another calculator. Well, another. I actually do remember you coming into the student group and saying, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I've done this. That, I mean, how powerful is that though? Again, breaking, because you know, my whole pet peeve is to say to people, what makes you think that you can't make the amount of money, your annual salary in a matter of months? You don't have to make it in a year. And of yeah, course yeah. now you're like a con, like when you posted that, I remember like it just like made people understand the work because like the truth is that Again, who conditioned us to believe that we can only make this income in 12 months? Why can't we make it in three months? Why can't we make it in six months? Why can't we make it in a month? There is no limit, but because of all the socialization and all our trauma and our childhood stories, we buy into this belief that this is how long we need to take to make this money. And you are living proof that that is not true. You don't need to take this long. I still can't explain it, but it's not true because it happened. <laughs> like, money kept on showing, it showed up, you know? And, and I think the other thing that um, one of my coaches told me that was powerful is that you don't always have to know where money comes from. Because for me, it was like, you know, I was in control. You know, mm. I, if I don't know where it's going to come from, it's not going to come. And then yeah. I started this thing of every time when I do my spending manifesto, I yeah. always give a portion to universe. I would yeah. always write, uh, this month I would like 50,000 from the universe. Yes, why not? Like, it, it <laughs> is, the, that's the way that you do it. Like, 
I mean, this is just the way we do things, guys. <laughs> no other explanations. It's just, let's put it this way. This is part of the magic, right? Mm -hmm. It yeah. is part of the magic. And like, as you start to heal your blocks, and I think it's also trauma blocks us from magic and from accepting magic and miracles, right? This is where you see the difference between children and adults. Adults carry so much trauma. So we're like, this is the way things are. This is the way things are going to happen. So we have no space for the miraculous and the magical. Mm -hmm. But as we start to heal those things that have been blocking us from the magical and the miraculous, we just open up to the fact that things are just going to happen. You know, it is just going to work out. Facts, you know. So I love that. So, what are the three lessons? Um, I think you've shared so much. Yeah. Well, let me just ask you. Maybe what is your favorite lesson on meditation and the money magic course? So you don't have to give us three because you've shared so many different lessons. <laughs> Okay, um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's the one that terrifies me the most. <laughs> Releasing bowels of service and hard work. <laughs> I remember the first six months into the course, that meditation haunted me with your voice because three o'clock in the, in like 3 a.m., yeah. I would hear your voice releasing vows of service and hard work and then i would just <laughs> because for some reason it wanted me to do it more than four times a day and if i didn't get to the yes if i didn't get to the four times before i sleep it will wake me up at three o'clock for me to put in that meditation while i'm sleeping yeah you see, you guys, before you was Fabi and she was telling us about how her ancestors wake her up and like do the course and do the coursework. Now you're being woken up, woken up at 3 a.m. And I shared in Fabi's uh, interview that like, I always joke that actually I'm talking to the living, but it's actually the ones that have passed that are like, hey, this child's work. This yeah. is why you guys are doing it. When I say I'm healing ancestral trauma, I really mean that. I'm you really mean it. I really am dealing directly with those people, with your ancestors. You're just out here, you know. But and, I mean, and, and, it's also because you released, because you did the vow of service is why I am not surprised because you did it so much. Because guys, so just in a nutshell, um, the vow of service meditation, extremely unique to wealthy money. So even if you Google it, you're not going to find it anywhere. It's in the money magic course. And the vow of service meditation is just us going into the Akashic records to release vows of service, which is really vows from that we've made in different lifetimes and galaxies and, and, and that our ancestors have made around working hard for little or no money, right? So if you hold that vow and it's in the Akashic plane, you'll be doing your utmost right now in this lifetime, doing all the healing, right? Like doing all the things that your previous coach was teaching you in, um, in, other, in other spaces and doing all that work. It's not to say that work doesn't work. The reason why it's probably not working for some of us is because we have this vow of service and because it's a soul thing. Vows are not something that we can think away that I can even say to you, journal away, give you a journal prompt. It doesn't work like that. It's something that you need. We need to do soul and spiritual work to release it. So you're doing like all the practical stuff, but the block is on a soul plane and a spiritual plane. So then it becomes hard to release uh, to now you're working hard, thus fulfilling the vow and you're getting no money, thus fulfilling the vow. So your soul and your spirit is like, what is the problem here? There is no problem. We are honoring this vow. Honoring the vow is still, yeah, you're actually living on mission with this vow. You're like, there is nothing wrong that your soul sees. So when we do the healing, the releasing the vow of service, we're literally force or not forcing but we're literally reckoning with the soul with our ancestors with past life versions of us 
uh, to really start to see that, uh, no, this vow no longer works for us. And we need to then release it on a spiritual plane because I don't know, did you have past life memories? Because a lot of students have a lot of past life memories around this vow service, myself included. I was like, freaking hell, I would have gone and tried to heal this thing from inner child, inner teen. Meanwhile, my past life self has made this insane vow of service and it's just holding on to it. I had two actually, um, wow. a famous soccer player and a radiology um, who was actually 86. So wow. every time, you know, and the, I, only after they released, that's when my spirit of money started showing up. Ah, that makes sense. When you have a deep <laughs> vow of service, your spirit of money will have a hard time showing up. Showing up, yes. I was ah. not even going, like I was calling the course and yeah. seeing which one about it. it never until they said, okay, we'll just stay here, but we are giving you permission to actually, you know, ah, but you, the past lives. Oh <laughs> sure, my gosh. Yeah, no, you did share some of them. I do remember in the student group. Um, because actually, Neo, you know, actually, I'm having an epiphany as you talk about this, that my epiphany is this actually makes sense that because usually I say to people, I think it may be a vow of loyalty or a God wound as to why you're not seeing your spirit of money. And maybe and then I start people off on the God wound when they struggle to see the, the spirit of mm -hmm. money. I mean, there's many different reasons why mm -hmm. we don't see the spirit of money. But what you've just said, it makes even more sense that at the core of it would be the vow of service. Because, hello, the vow of service is Everyone literally money. created so that we never make money, you know? And it explains why you would keep getting more responsibility, but not get more money because mm. of your vow of service. Huh, okay. Wow, okay. So, I know I created the vow service, the body of work around the vow service, but guys, this is literally what happens in the money magic course for me. It's like, I also learn how this work ties into everything else. Cause I'm usually guided to create these meditations. And, and so I'm mostly like downloading them and also just doing them myself. So it's only through time that I also start to understand it. So I'm also understanding that the vow of service ties very deeply to financial set points. I didn't know that. Thank you. For oh, yeah. And, and on, this, on wow. the financial set point issue, mm -hmm. um, now after the spirit of money showed up, mm -hmm. I went to three or four interviews. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, they were a demotion for me yeah. based on where I am. But actually, I didn't even get the, 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 the post. Yes. So it shows that now that the spirit of money is up and the vow service is, is down, or it has been released. Uh, there's no way I'm going to accept anything less. Yeah. You know? So I didn't even get those. I mean, there were there were a demotion. There was no way I cannot get those posts if you are being honest. But I didn't get them <laughs> because moving forward, we are going there. We cannot be going down. Oh my gosh. Okay. No. Okay. Like wow. <laughs> wow. I learned new things in all these interviews. Like I. Uh, one of the Money Magic students was saying to me, oh my God, you're so, this is so awesome. I'm so happy that you're allowing us to do these interviews. I was like, sis, I also learn, right? Like <laughs> now I've actually started to understand that when students come through and they say, I have a financial set point and I haven't been able to do ABCD, I can also refer them to the vow of service, mm -hmm. right? Because I've always assumed that that is a deep God wound, but that actually helps me understand, like it makes sense that it would be a vow service as well. As well. Mm -hmm. Whew, wow, wow. And guys, yeah, the vow of service is that deep that you have to do it several times. I, and I think also I, I get annoyed because our vows of service are also, especially as black women born into African families. And if you are the first born daughter, forget it. Your vow of service does it. <laughs> You know, it's just reinforced over and over again. <laughs> so, yeah. So my last question to you now is um, most people feel like they can do the work in the course, that the work that we do in the course, they can just, 
it's the same work that I do when I'm doing live videos in the student group on Instagram and that they can just have the same kind of shifts by just watching those videos and reading my blog posts. What would you say to those people? Um, I had written a very nice um, um, <laughs> explanation, but something else decided to come up. When Let's you were talking, I saw so, uh, th there's this, there's this um, Raja um, um, Robertson where somebody would be, I think it's a blind man and a child who's uh, mm -hmm. assisting them with a working stick. And then they would all, the blind man would always sense that Raja or the Robertson thingy and then they will make a sign as if I'm smelling something. Now, yeah. smelling something does not mean you are eating it. And it mm. might be satisfying in your mind because of the one senses. You know, all our senses are, are powerful. So it might feel like it's satisfying because now you've smelled it. Yes. But once you smell it and taste it and then it also fills you up, it's a different type of wow you know feeling so yes when they see your 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 um videos and your life it feels like they know how it feels because their smell mm. is so the aroma in the nose but now yeah. combine the nose with the taste and the saliva and the chewing and also being filled up in your stomach how satisfying that would be you know wow. oh, <laughs> i love that i love that Ooh, that's such a beautiful description, actually. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Newa, you've given us so much. And I know that like the Money Magic students that are listening in on this have probably taken tons of notes and are like, okay, these are the lessons that we're going to go check out because I am understanding some things from listening to her. Uh, but how people have also heard you talk about genies they've heard you talk about your podcast please can you give us your podcast link please can you tell us how we can get hold of you how can people work with you what are the various services that you offer time to share what you do <laughs> okay um the we have a the genie coach podcast and it's mm -hmm. on pod being currently with the mm -hmm. uh, plan of expanding to other platforms. But when yeah. you type the genie coach, genie coach is one word, the genie yes. coach podcast on, 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 on uh, pod bean, but I'll also mm -hmm. send you the, the link to put on the bio. And then on Facebook, I'm Neo Nari. And then we also have the genie coach, um, pod, uh, the genie coach page on Facebook as well. Oh, wow. And then, yes, and then I think uh, I work much better on email, neo.nare yeah. at gmail.com. Okay. And then if you want to work with me, you can always book an exploratory um, session so that we can see whether we need to manage the environment or we need to really start nurturing and preserving the genie. Because sometimes it's us who come to the baggage and then we want to do the work on the genie, whereas actually it's us who needs to now start unpacking. Preach, <laughs> preach. Like yes, most times so it really has nothing to do with the genies at all. The genies are just themselves, you know, and often they are problem, if they have deep issues and problems, it's because we are who we are <laughs> as adults <laughs> and we're stress, we're literally stressing the poor genies to behave out of character. And then, um. The core of Jimmy coaching is actually play therapy. So we do a lot of playing. Um, we don't want to end up reparenting the inner child. So the inner child becomes happy and parented there and there. And we also believe in diversity. And you know that the typical mental institution we bring into the genie because it's normalized there. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we play in mud, you know, we do muddy puddles anything we sing out of tune because that's what makes our souls and our inner genius happy so yeah <laughs> i love this so much this is so thank beautiful you. so guys thank you so much for tuning in and thank you Neo. guys go check out Neo's podcast she's interviewed some phenomenal women phenomenal mothers who are parenting completely differently in the most 
conscious way. So if you're looking for a podcast on conscious parenting, look no further than the Genie Coach, right? Go check it out. And of course, hit her up for uh, your a conscious parenting um, coaching, right? Definitely take her up on the offer. Newa is extremely wise, as you guys can already hear uh, from this podcast. And she really is so passionate about genies. So, and we need more people who are this passionate about conscious parenting, especially in our communities. And I say particularly in South Africa, right? Because we carry a lot of deep trauma in this country, uh, based uh, partic- just not even just from our families, just the country itself has like mm-hmm. centuries of trauma and it's impacted us and how we've been brought up. So mm-hmm. coaching and being a conscious parent will really help us, right? Yes, so, and if you've loved this podcast and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to go on my money journey. I want to learn more. I'm resonating with this. This is what I'm about. Then definitely register for the money magic course at wealthy-money.com forward slash money magic again wealthy-money.com forward slash money magic and um uh, hit me up if you have any questions and if we're closed for registration and you're listening to this podcast after registration has closed get on the waiting list we will definitely open for registration again. So as soon as you get on the waiting list, you'll be able to get more information about how you can get on a board for registration. So thank you so much, Neo, once more. Thank Thank you you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much, Money Magicians. We will see you next week. Have a phenomenal day further. And of course, oh, before I go, don't forget to leave us a five-star review, uh, a five-star rating on iTunes and write a review on iTunes about this podcast and what you love and enjoy. And of course, leave us comments on Podbean. And again, I'm always very grateful for the comments that you guys leave on YouTube. So just head on over to uh, iTunes after leaving us comments on YouTube and just like... Uh, let us know what you love about the podcast leave us an itunes review thank you so much have a fantastic day further thank you